Just this past Wednesday, the inaugural commercial voyage for the first Chinese-produced large cruise ship was officially scheduled for January 1, 2024, departing from the Shanghai Wuzangku International Cruise Port. Many might not be aware of how challenging it is to construct such a massive cruise ship. It comprises 25 million components, which is five times the total number of parts in the C919 large aircraft and 13 times that of the Fuxing high-speed train. It stretches 323.6 meters in length, equivalent to a horizontal Eiffel Tower atop the sea, with a total cable length similar to the distance from Shanghai to Lhasa. The project involved a total of 60,000 blueprints and took four years to complete. If these numbers make it sound less difficult than it actually is, then you're mistaken. The emergence of this large cruise ship marks the breaking of a century-long European shipbuilding company monopoly. The technology content of large cruise ships is very high. It is also known as the three pearls of the world's shipbuilding industry along with aircraft carriers and LNG ships. In addition, it is also the ship with the highest added value, the most complex engineering and the most difficult construction. Take China's domestic cruise ship as an example. Its total length exceeds 320 meters and its gross tonnage exceeds 140,000 tons. Both its length and tonnage are much larger than China's aircraft carrier Fujian. So, we can imagine how difficult it is to manufacture. If any country can possess this kind of ship construction technology, it will directly train countless shipbuilding engineers in the country, so large cruise ships can directly reflect a country's shipbuilding industry and even the overall technological level. In the past, this technology was in the hands of Europe. The four major European shipbuilding groups accounted for 95% of the market share. The United States, Japan, and South Korea had invested huge sums of money in betting on this technology, but all ended in disastrous failures. But no one expected that China would be the first to achieve a breakthrough. So the question is, why is it so difficult? Why did China accomplish what Japan and South Korea failed to accomplish? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about, let's get started. Well, are large cruise ships really that difficult to build? The answer is really difficult. The construction of cruise ships is different from the construction of ordinary ships. However, large cruise ships are entertainment ships, and there are thousands of cabins, such as restaurants, guest rooms, cinemas, concert halls, and even swimming pools. The functions, layouts, and facilities of each cabin are different. In a word, a large cruise ship is a small sea city. Therefore, the design, construction and later decoration of large cruise ships are very complicated. In 2002, Japan's Mitsubishi Heavy Industries undertook the construction of the Carnival Diamond Princess for the first time. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries is one of the largest shipbuilding companies in the world. Their manufacturing strength is very strong, and they can manufacture aircraft parts, high-speed rail, and automobiles. The same is true for ships. They have experience in building various ships under their banner. However, during the construction of the Diamond Princess, a fire broke out in the shipyard of Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, and the fire burned for 19 hours before it was extinguished. The fire caused Mitsubishi Heavy Industries to suffer heavy losses. In the end, they postponed the construction of the ship for one year and announced that they would no longer undertake the construction of luxury cruise ships. In 2011, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries launched an attack on luxury cruise ships again. At this time, the German Ida Cruise Line also wanted to expand its business, so Mitsubishi took the initiative to participate in their bidding. However, due to the previous cruise fire accident, Ida Cruises was not willing to let Mitsubishi undertake the construction. Mitsubishi made a lot of promises in order to win the Ida Cruises deal. The two most important ones are the construction period and breach of contract fee. It roughly means that Mitsubishi Heavy Industries promised to complete the first cruise ship in only 23 months. If it cannot be completed, it will have to pay a high breach of contract fee for every day of delay. How dare Mitsubishi Heavy Industries guarantee it? 
It is because they have rich experience that they believe that they have the ability and strength to sprint for this laurels. With these guarantees, Ida Cruises booked two cruise ships with them. As a result, the tragedy happened again. Mitsubishi Heavy Industries suffered repeated setbacks in the design first, and then a fire broke out in the construction, and finally it was rejected by the European boss during the decoration. It took four years to finally build this cruise ship, and Mitsubishi suffered numerous losses. After that, Mitsubishi once again announced its withdrawal from the large cruise project. Why is it that Mitsubishi can't deal with large cruise ships, and there are fires and other problems one after another? In fact, this has something to do with the complexity of large cruise ships. The first is the difficulty of design. Its workload is no less than that of redesigning a small city. Taking China-made cruise ships as an example, its design drawings exceed 60,000. Why so many? This is because large cruise ships have thousands of cabins, which can be divided into hundreds of different systems and hundreds of subsystems. If they are connected by cables, it will take about 4,200 kilometers. Therefore, a reasonable layout is necessary, which is the first thing to be considered when designing drawings. Not only must the cabins and systems not interfere with each other, but it must also be reasonable and orderly to make customers feel comfortable. After you have designed the layout, you have to design the style of the ship. As a combination of ship, hotel, and entertainment city, a large cruise ship needs to face tourists from all over the world. Therefore, the requirements for the interior decoration, furniture selection and layout of the cruise ship are very high, and the design workload is higher than that of a seven-star hotel. In addition, there are also very strict design requirements for safety, comfort, entertainment, etc. Especially security. Since the cruise ship is sailing on the sea, if there is an accident, external rescue will be very difficult. Therefore, in 2006, the International Maritime Organization clearly stipulated that the requirements of safe return to port, SRTP, must be introduced into the design of cruise ships. For example, in the event of accidents such as flooding or fire, how to ensure that it safely travels to the shore, and how to escape if it cannot travel to the shore, etc. Therefore, under various requirements, the design of a large cruise ship is very cumbersome and difficult, which requires tens of thousands of design drawings. So, after three delays, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries finally delivered its first large cruise ship in 2016. They calculated the cost with their finances and found that it cost 2.3 billion US dollars to build this ship, and the contract for this ship was only 800 million US dollars. In other words, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries lost $1.6 billion and damaged its reputation. Therefore, after this, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries announced again that it would no longer accept orders for large cruise ships of more than 100,000 tons in the future, and completely withdrew from this industry. So here comes the question, after Japan's disastrous defeat, why did China enter the large cruise liner? In addition to improving the overall level of the shipbuilding industry, it can also create very large profits. The luxury cruise ship itself is the highest value-added and most profitable product in the shipbuilding industry. In addition, the market for luxury cruise ships in China is also huge. In 2006, when China first came into contact with luxury cruise ships, tourists grew rapidly at a rate of about 50% per year. In 2017, China surpassed Europe to become the world's second-largest cruise market, second only to the United States. In 2020, China will develop rapidly at a growth rate of 10%, while the United States only has 4%. Therefore, China also attaches great importance to the development of luxury cruise ships. It is estimated that by 2035, China's annual cruise market will reach 14 million passengers, making it the world's largest cruise market. During this period, China introduced a lot of policies to support the country's cruise industry, and conquering the construction technology of luxury cruise ships is a key step for China to seize the luxury cruise market. In 2019, the first large-scale cruise ship officially started construction. The total length of the hull is 323.6 meters, which is equivalent to a 16-story entertainment city. It can accommodate up to 5,246 tourists and is a veritable giant. 
For luxury cruise ships, China did not acquire European shipyards like South Korea did, nor did it blindly choose to go it alone like the Japanese. Instead, it established a joint venture with Italy's Fincantieri Group, with the two holding 60% and 40% of the shares respectively. Then, through this company as an intermediary, they purchased the technical authorization of the Vision cruise ship from them, obtained the design drawings, and reached a consulting business cooperation with the Fincantieri Group, thus obtaining the most precious wealth of this century-old ship, experience. In August 2022, before the construction of the first domestic cruise ship is completed, China will officially start building the second large cruise ship. This time, the predecessors of the world's shipbuilding will experience what is called China's learning speed. According to China's plan, by 2025, the localization rate of domestic cruise ships will reach half, by 2030, the localization rate of domestic cruise ships will reach more than 80%. By then, China will have basically mastered all the technology and industrial chain of large cruise ships, and domestic cruise ships will be born in a spurt. Okay, that's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.